This fat tire electric bike has full suspension and a torque sensor. It's called the Hobsco Hob Scout, and in today's video, we're gonna review it. MSRP on this e-bike is 2,500 bucks, but in the link below this video in the description box, you can find a discount code and any sort of promotions that are going on. But do not buy this e-bike just yet. Let's crack it open, take a closer look at it. This one comes in glossy green. And here's what that green looks like when you get it out of the box. But if you don't like this green, the Hop Scout is available in one other color in the link below this video. As mentioned, this is a full suspension e-bike, meaning we have a four link rear shock. This one is an HLT 100. And down here is the frame integrated battery. Obviously you can charge it on the bike or twist this key to pop the whole thing out. And this e-bike is running a 48 volt, 15 amp hour, 720 watt hour energy battery. 48 volt battery charge to max is 54.6. It's a kind of middle of the road battery, which does help keep the weight of it down to just eight pound, 13 ounce, pretty much nine pound battery. And while some e-bikes do run a bigger battery, since this one has a torque sensor, we might get a little better efficiency out of it. We'll find out. And let's see what we get in the black box. Oh, these pedals look decent. They are metal pedals. Ginya. They are like a mountain bike style flat. Definitely got some sharp cleats there. Keep your feet stuck to the pedals very well. Better watch your shins on these. While we have the scale out, let's weigh them. 12.5 ounce, 355 grams for the pair. But really what I wanted to see in here was the charger. It is branded Hofsco and it is a three amp output charger, 15 amp hour battery divided by three amp charge rate. According to my math, that'd be about five hours to charge from completely empty to completely full. Other items included are the warranty card, user manual, kickstand, derailleur guard, and instructions. The rear hub motor on this e-bike is Sutto. Hofsco seems to run Sutto on a lot of their bikes. Found it to be pretty powerful, we'll find out here soon. And the Hofsco is running radius hydraulic brakes. Rotor size is 180 millimeters. Of course, the tires are 26 inches tall and four inches wide on the front as well as the back. This one is running Chow Yang tires with a Hobsco branded wheel. Big ol' spokes on here should be pretty strong. Looks like the front wheel will bolt on no quick release lever. Taking a look at the seat, it is definitely more of a mountain bike style seat. Relatively narrow, firm, little cutout in the middle. Got a little bit of shape, a little bit of arch to it. Not the typical seat I see on these fat tire e-bikes. Really curious to see how comfortable it's gonna be. And this particular bike comes with a detachable rear light. This will not run on the battery of the e-bike. It's got its own batteries in here. Front suspension is Zoom Forgo. Preload adjustment is on the left stanchion. Right stanchion has micro adjustments with a lockout feature so you can adjust it. Let's check out the handlebars and riding position. I'm having a little difficulty getting this plastic piece off. This ought to do it. There we go. Throw this guy out. I always feel a little more secure with the wheel that bolts down as opposed to a quick release lever but this will make it a little more difficult to take the front wheel off in case you want to load it up in a car or something you think your paws will fit on the pedals you want to do some pedaling taking a peek at the other side here we have a tourney derailleur they give you a derailleur guard you can install that'll help protect your derailleur i'm probably not going to install this and there are seven speeds on the shimano gear set chain ring up front has a guard on each side it'll help keep your chain on there if you're doing some off-roading so let's pop the battery on here Pretty light and manageable. And we'll take a look at the dash and the controls. But first, let me show you the size of this bike. With the seat on maximum height, my inseam is 34. I am six foot five hopping on this thing. And here's what I look like on the bike. Here's what my pedal stroke looks like. And I'm noticing it's a relatively compact cockpit. Puts me close to the handlebars so I can sit pretty upright. And suspension feels good. Looks like the doggy found a toy. The derailleur is not a toy. Suspension's feeling nice. Pretty plush feeling. And I'll drop the seat on the minimum height. So that's as far as the seat will go down. There's about an inch or two play there. Probably just hitting the bottom of the seat post area. And here's what I look like with the seat on minimum height. Suspension's feeling pretty plush. There are no adjustments on it. One of the things that keeps the cockpit compact is a very short stem. Quick peek at the handlebars, they are pretty much flat. Sweep back maybe just a little tiny bit. We get round rubber grips. Seven speeds on the Shimano shifters. Brake levers are radius hydraulic. The front actually has a little bit of a rubber soft grip surface. Seems pretty nice, we'll try them out soon. Headlight on front, there is an app. You just scan that QR code to get access to it. We'll try the app out here soon. Fire that up in just a moment. Same thumb throttle we've seen 
on other Hobsco bikes, it has a rubber soft touch surface. Here are the controls for increase, decrease pedal assist, on off switch, headlight, same grip and brake on the left. So let's go ahead and fire this thing up. Same Hobsco display we've seen on other e-bikes. Technically there is color, it is blue. And with this camera, you will notice that there is no flickering. Later on, on my GoPro camera during the actual ride, it'll appear to be flickering, but just know to your eyes, this does not flicker. So we get five levels of pedal assist starting on zero. Tabbing that button, we get odometer, trip, and odometer. Holding this, we'll turn on the light. We get an indicator there. Battery is expressed in terms of a bar. I think the app actually has percentages. We'll check that out soon. Here's what the light is looking like shining on the floor. And as mentioned before, this light down here runs on its own battery, so there is no brake light or anything like that on the Hobsco Hobscout. So let's try out pedal assist five. Full throttle, ready, go. This bike does ship as a class two, meaning it will top out at 20 miles per hour under throttle only, but we can get into the Hobsco app and unlock that, which we'll do on the actual ride. All right, dudes, let's take the Hobsco Hobsco out of the stable. You can go ahead and ignore that 72 volt, 10,000 watt bike back there. That'll be on my other channel, Juice Joyrides. Keep you out of here, buddy. You do not have a motorcycle license yet, bro. Of course, we'll go ahead and fire up the Strava to check our official range on this 48 volt, 15 amp hour battery pack. And along the way today, I'm gonna show you how to unlock the top speed on this bike in the settings here. We'll check out the Hobsco app as well. So the very first test we're gonna do here is run it up the 20% grade. We'll do thumb throttle only, pedal assist five, no pedaling. These uh, Hobsco motors tend to be Pretty torquey, let's see how it does here. So showing full power, no pedaling, I weigh 200 pounds, crank and ride on up, thumb throttle only. That baby is not a happy baby. <laughs> Woo, beautiful day out here in Southern California today. We are rolling on a 15 amp hour battery pack. Can you see that display through my polarized lens? It's a little bit bright out here today. I can see it. It does definitely dim it a little bit with sun sunglasses. And as I mentioned before, you might see a little flickering on the GoPro that does not flicker to your eyes at all. That's just the 60 Hertz refresh rate of the GoPro. Slow on down here. Don't want to run anybody over with a monster truck. A couple things I am noticing hopping on this bike right away. The seat is, you know, narrow and relatively hard. Now it is full suspension, so it's not necessarily uncomfortable. I am noticing those little rubber things on the front of the brake levers makes them just a little bit nicer to the touch and then riding position cockpit on this bike is relatively compact gets you in a more upright seating position which i like so we'll go ahead bump this thing on down to pedal assist zero uh, throttle does nothing i felt that suspension squish in just a little bit as i'm starting to pedal here on pedal assist one you can kind of get this thing rolling definitely feel a little bit of weight to it now it is only 15 amp hour battery pack not 20 amp hour battery pack so that actually does bring the weight down just a few pounds which is actually noticeable to do to re reviews you know quite a few bikes does make a difference in that weight but let's go ahead throw this thing on pedal assist one we are working with a torque sensor so it will give us power based on how hard we press on the pedals feels like a nice torque sensor at first observation here you know it's just it's helping us let's shift on into three um, on the lowest pedal assist here it's going to give us power like a lower power amount obviously but it does not limit us to any particular speed it does not seem start from a stop here on pedal assist one so it kicks right in and with each pedal stroke it's yeah giving me power in proportion to how hard i'm pedaling at a lower rate. I mean, gear one, we can get up to about 17, 18, 19. Let's try out these radius brakes a bit. They're feeling nice. Throttle only, get all that power. So on pedal assist one, it looks like you'll get full power with the throttle. And with the stock settings, it'll top us out at 20 miles an hour. As a class two e-bike should be, throttle will stop working at 20 miles an hour. However, I'm gonna show you how to unlock that throttle to take us beyond 20 miles an hour here shortly. So let's go ahead and throw that on pedal assist two, and it'll just, you know, Help you out just a little bit more. You just don't have to press as hard on the pedals for each pedal stroke to get the power. Pedal assist three. Likewise, you know, it just makes everything a little bit easier. I am in gear number seven now, pedaling at 21 miles an hour. Well, let's see, it's 20 miles an hour. Let's just crank it up the pedal assist five. Yeah, stock settings will top us out at 20 miles an hour before it starts reducing our power. We can see there's a little blue bar right there that indicates how much power the motor is helping you. And no fenders, no racks, nothing on this bike. You know, it is a fat tire e-bike, but you know, with the smaller battery and less stuff being on it and wider handlebars, wide flat handlebars, this actually does feel uh, relatively uh, nimble and light for a fat tire e-bike, if that makes any sense. I was wondering what that noise was down here. I forgot to take this thing off. Zoom. Ah, there we 
my God, put that in my pocket. So there's two ways you can increase the top speed on this bike. One, you can do it in the menus. So you don't need to use the app at all. I'll show you how to do that in a few. The other way is you can just hook this up with the uh, Bluetooth. Scan complete, uh, comes right up. I've never had any trouble uh, leaking up a Hopsco bike on their app. Binding, yeah, it comes right up. Then what you do, just go to e-bike classes here and uh, unlock class three, agree to everything. And now we are class three. Let's see if the throttle will work up to 28. If not, we'll uh, unlock that in a moment. Other thing I am noticing is I really like these pedals uh, compared to most of the pedals I try on most budget-friendly bikes. They feel extra grippy and they are like, uh, I think they're aluminum. It's some sort of metal. They, they feel great to my foot. And pedal assist five on this bike, man. You're gonna feel like Superman riding this thing, dude. Brakes feel great, man. I'm loving this one so far. I love the riding position. Uh, how it just kind of puts you up on the handlebar just a little bit. The wide handlebars, man, this thing just feels like it's ready to ride. And of course it is full suspension. So that should make it a lot more comfortable for, you know, street riding as well as riding over here, you know, off-road a little bit. Full suspension, you know, rear suspension is feeling good. Front suspension is feeling good. We got 80 millimeter travel on the front. Back is relatively soft. It's that four link rear suspension. So let's try throttle out here on the speedier road. Well, it cut us off at 20 still. Uh, 22, 23, 24. So throttle works beyond 20 now that we got to the end. And unlock that. And let's get on rolling here. So we don't have to use the throttle. We can keep pedaling and gear number seven. Let's see how the cadence feels here. So at about 26, I feel like I'm moving pretty darn quick. Uh, there's probably the right amount of gears on this bike. It would be nice if there was, you know, maybe one more gear number eight or a bigger chain ring up front to, you know, if you really want to crank out some high speeds. So 27 is where it's showing us right now. No turn signals, but we'll work our way on over here. And this bike is feeling zoomy. Let's go ahead and try out the zero to 20 acceleration on this bike. GPS in the right, thumb throttle on the left. Ready, go. So pretty torquey bike showing 13. Uh, we got some people walking in the bike like that guy. His wife did not look happy at all about that. Try it again right here. So ready, go. So immediate power and five, 11, 16, 18, 20. Well, basically 20 there. So fast e bike, pretty typical 750 watt nominal. And since it is a torque sensor, we can start out on pedal says five here and just kind of you know, just pedal a little bit and it's not gonna just floor it and give you all the power. If this were a cadence sensor starting out on pedal assist five, it would basically just mash the throttle. It would take you straight up to the top speed of 20, 28 miles an hour, whatever that is on the bike you're on. So this one, you can just kind of pedal lightly and uh, you know, it'll just give you, give you a little bit of power, hold you at about 12, but you can pedal a little harder and boom, man, you're a superman. So real quick, I wanna show you how to unlock the top speed on this bike in case the app doesn't work. Just hold down this plus and minus button. For about a second, then P1 comes up. You just tap the light button until it goes to P3, then hit plus. That should do it. That, that's all you gotta do. Just change that to P3 and uh, that'll unlock the top speed as well. And speaking of top speed, let's flip this thing around and get an official run. Uh, here is the GPS in my right hand. Wind is actually coming from this direction right now. Usually the wind's blowing the other way, but the throttle is taking me, it's a pretty darn strong head wind right now. Yeah, wind is going the other way. Let's actually pop over here behind the Aston Martin and whip this thing around. Nice looking car. Nice sounding car. And full throttle. So GPS is showing 14, 15. And now we're about to over whoa, overtake this Toyota. All right, I guess I'll do it. 25, throttle only, 26, GPS is showing, 27, GPS showing 27, 28 in the GPS, 29 on the GPS, and that's pretty much gonna uh, top us out. Now it's starting to reduce power there a little bit, so uh, pretty much, you know, class three, top speed on this bike. Dang, all the cars out to play today, M3, Porsche 911, Carrera S. Man, I gotta hear that flat six, a little throttle, bro. So definitely noticing the seat on this bike is relatively narrow and firm, you know, definitely kind of more of like a mountain biking seat as opposed to, you know, like a, a cruiser seat. Now that's something you, you could obviously just swap that out very easily if you don't like it. Not that I don't like it, just noticing it's relatively firm. And of course today we are rolling on ideal tires for riding in the sand, 26 by four knobby tread. Let's go up here first and foremost before we uh, get out on the flat sand. 
No problem, just rolling on over that. We'll try it here on this super bumpy section. It's really freaking windy. I hope you guys can hear me. But yeah, full suspension, four link bar, uh, air shock back there. This thing roll, rolls pretty supple and pretty soft over that. And it's got the adjustable suspension on the front, so you can kind of fine tune that just how you like it. This dude is like bunny hopping this beach cruiser. What? <laughs> Look at the skill. Look at this. Dang. That's awesome, man. I've never seen somebody ride a bike like that, like that. Do you ride BMX? I used to while I was a kid. All right, let's go try this thing out on the sand and full suspension on the boardwalk. Yeah, man. The seat up the one's pretty good. Ooh, a little bit going on here. Let's try it out on the sand now. So we got it on gear number or uh, pedal assist three right now. And I'm going to do throttle only starting now. Oh, it's only on pedal assist three. Put it on five, but you get access to all the power with the throttle, regardless of what pedal assist you're on. So, I mean, 26 inch tall by four inch wide knobby tread. That's about as good as you can get performing on the sand. Uh, all wheel drive would obviously be better. Get away from these doggies a little bit and work our way back uphill in the sand here. Motors on the Hobsco bikes are generally pretty strong, and this one is. Pretty strong, pulling us right on up. Pedal assist five here, kind of whipping on through. Still not pedaling. Sand is probably a little bit more packed than usual because it's rain. It's been like a rainstorm here in LA for like three days. Pulling us right on through the sand, no problem. Not even pedaling. Let's retrace our tracks here. Go shoot just a little bit of B roll into the headwind. Yeah, it's a strong motor, man. Strong, strong motor. Really can't ask for too much more for something that's legal my goodness is it windy out here let's go ahead and test the limits of this bike just a little bit harder today out here in the sand ride it up here uh up this hill in the sand and see if we can power on through all of this i hope the microphone doesn't sound too windy i'm pedaling it just a little bit here to help keep the speed up because we're going 10 miles an hour and man this bike is really just uh crushing it out here pretty good honestly nine miles an hour and the sand's gonna maybe get a little bit softer here we're on the lowest gear powering on through yeah dude this thing's killing it really can't ask much more from a uh like i said street legal electric fat tire e-bike and we do have full suspension but probably shouldn't be hopping that let's uh ride in the danger zone here just a little bit there we go Oh, monster truck. So let's go test out the California Incline, run this battery through the circuit, then I'll test the brakes and see what kind of final rate we end up with. Let's actually go ahead and muscle this on through Muscle Beach just because I'm feeling a little extra confident in this motor's ability. Yeah, dude, crushing it. We'll see how the battery pans out here today. No problem, though. So as you already know, the California Incline is the top of that cliff. It's 85 feet tall, 12% grade. Man, what a clear day. Look at the mountains out there. And rolling into the relatively steep loopy loop section here, we are throttle only. This bike is going to have no trouble climbing this hill on throttle only, but we'll see what kind of number it does on the battery. We'll try out the brakes at the bottom of the California Incline right before we crash into this hill. Or this wall. So full throttle from the bottom. Pedal assist five. Well, it doesn't matter. Throttle only. Eight miles an hour. Nine miles an hour. Eleven miles an hour. The wee woos are coming. Thirteen miles an hour. Fourteen. Fifteen. Sixteen. And sixteen on throttle only. Got some traffic here in the bike lane. Sixteen. Head on traffic coming. We better get over. There's a kid. Sixteen miles an hour. Seventeen miles an hour. So this one's going to top out right at about. 17 miles an hour. It is giving full power still on throttle only. 17 miles an hour, top of the California incline. Did not pedal this at all. And I gotta say, man, one of my least favorite things on this bike is the uh, battery readout. It just gives us bars. I wish it gave us a percentage. Showing three right now. Let's see where the range pans out here at the end of the day. But first, let's test the brakes at the bottom of this hill. So throttle only is gonna top us out, you know, right around 27, 28, where it starts cutting our power. I can look at the blue bar there and just see, you know, it completely removes power. And we are on radius. 180 millimeter hydraulic brakes and we're gonna go ahead and give them a, a test here see how they perform right about yeah man you can really control and modulate the power you can see i was able to you know deliver it exactly precisely plant this thing where i want to stop it good brakes on this bike man today we will be blessed with the presence of the champion man there's the two champions you're the number one champion Sam Grant. everything okay yeah yeah good champion Champion. Nice ride. Thanks, man. Dude, it's awesome just out here spreading good vibes. So we'll go ahead and give it our standard slam on the brakes of about 20 miles an hour. And yeah, dude, good brakes on this bike. Like I was saying before, I like the levers on this bike. They feel smooth and natural, linear, but they have that little rubber pad on there too. Just a little 
creature comforts. Again, the seat is starting to wear on me a little bit though. Don't love this seat. It's a little bit hard, a little bit narrow for me for my personal preferences. We are currently 10 miles into this ride, 53 minutes, showing four out of five bars right now after, oh, after turning this bike on and back off. So let's head on home. I'll leave you with my final thoughts. We'll check the final range. Dang, look at all the sarongs. There's a group ride out happening right here. All right, dudes, final thoughts on the Hob Scout from Hob Scout. Let's talk about the pros and cons and the price. So it's listed at 2,500 bucks right now. In the description box below this video, you can find the current price and if there's any promotions going on. If you did use that link below the video in the description box, that would help support my reviews if you did decide to buy this bike. It'll also give you the best price using that coupon code down there. So 2,500 bucks, definitely not a cheap price for an electric bike. Starting with the cons on this bike, uh, I definitely swap out the seat on this bike after being on this thing for about 12 miles it kind of hurts my bottom side mostly just because i'm used to riding you know on squishier seats another downside maybe there is no tail light uh no brake light on this bike personally i don't really care about that i know some people do pros you know you got those fat four inch wide 26 inch tires they can take this thing anywhere and it is full suspension so other than the seat, you're gonna be riding in comfort on this bike. For a fat tire e-bike, it's relatively nimble. Part of that is because it has a 15 amp hour battery pack instead of like a larger 20 amp hour battery pack. So let's see what kind of range we end up doing. And then obviously, you know, it's got that torque sensor. So you're gonna really be able to deliver that power in a, in a really nice controlled way compared to the way some cadence sensors work. All around, it's a pretty good bike. And I think if you can get it for the right price, you'll definitely be happy with this e-bike. So if you're gonna buy it, use the link below the video in the description box. Let's head on home, see what the final range is. What do you guys think? You wanna see a trike on the channel? I've never seen this in my life. This dude is rolling on a fat tire on the front wheel and a skinny tire on the back. Oh, he's got a hub motor on the front. Still got the power, dude. We got this, man. We got this. That was still yellow, right? All right, dude. Just rolling back in the neighborhood. 18 miles, hour and a half ride time. Average speed, 12 miles an hour. And it is showing two out of five bars right now. So two bars remaining after 18 miles. Pull up the app here. We can look and see. It shows 40%. Uh, it just kind of jumps in increments of 20%. So not exactly sure where we are on the battery. So 48 volt, 15 amp hour, you know, that's pretty much what I would expect, especially running it a bit harder above speeds of 20 miles an hour and out in the sand like that. On a battery of this size, you know, if you pedal it, especially at the torque sensor, put in a little effort, you probably do 40 miles, maybe a little bit more, 50 miles. I rode a battery of this size out to the Hollywood sign, did about 40 miles on it in the past. With the full suspension, you might get a little bit less range because that rear shock will uh, kind of absorb some of your kinetic energy. All around this has been a nice e-bike to ride and if you do want to grab one buy it through the link below. Below the video in the description box might have a little discount code down there for you and of course I greatly appreciate your support if you do buy it through that link. However, if this is not the kind of e-bike you're looking for, watch this video next. Catch you over there. Oh gosh, better hit the brakes.